Could Texas A&M's cornerback room go from being one of the worst in the SEC to one of the best? You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in to Locked On Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak. Thanks for making Locked On Aggies your first listen every single day. And ladies and gentlemen, we need to have a conversation. You know, I kind of alluded to this the other day, talked about it, but I really want to dive into it today. On three, put out their list of top 10 cornerback rooms heading into this season. And they had Texas A&M ranked. And I'll tell you, it's so funny because... This gets you excited. It's of course this gets you excited about man, maybe something we think could be a serious concern can be a a plus of this football team. But uh, I just think we need to have the conversation. Is this legitimate? Is this possible? So let's run through the rankings of where the Aggies were listed on this cornerback room. Let's see if I liked it. They were they were 10th overall and they were third in the SEC. So the three SEC or excuse me, the two SEC teams ahead of Texas A&M were 8 and 9. And that was Georgia and Kentucky and then the Aggies were listed 10th. So you know, you had some other good teams on there. Notre Dame was on there. We know Notre Dame's defense will be really solid. So the question now, once again, is, is this true? Is this legitimate? Could Texas A&M's cornerback room be this good? And I'm going to give both sides of the argument. To the yes side of the argument, I think you did an incredible job going to get talent from the portal. You've got to remember, you still got Tariq Chappelle, who we know can play the position, and you've still got some of the young guys from last year who we saw on the field some, and it wasn't all great, but that's, I mean, you're still high four-star players that are developing, learning the speed of the game. It is not easy to walk on the field and be good. We discuss this all the time. So you've got all of those talented transfers you brought in, You've still got your veteran back, Chappelle, and some of these young guys from last year, some of these young guys from this year. So that is kind of, and then, oh, yeah, what about this guy, Terry Bussey coming in, uh, which Coach Elko has time and time again warned us, listen, don't put unrealistic expectations behind this kid, um, which is true and fair. He's a freshman. we got to remember that, but I think he's going to be a star. Perhaps not this year, but I still think you see him some this year. So you've got all of those players in this room. And the way I look at it is you've got 10 guys who can be really good. Eight guys can be really good to fill a few positions. Okay? You need a nickel and you need a couple outside corners. It's not – you need you need three of these guys. You need a couple outside guys and a nickel to be good out of the eight to 10 guys that you have on this roster that you could are potentially fighting for spots. That is all you need. And so my argument for the positive side of this is, listen, I think Texas A&M has enough of these solid corners to where there is no way in the world that two, that a couple of them, a few of them can't be good. They did a great – Coach Elko did an incredible, incredible job in the portal going to get – and that's one thing that gets me excited for the future is knowing that Coach Elko was able to look back and go, hey, I got to fix this position group. There's some young guys with upside, but we got to upgrade now with some veteran talent. And who do you go get? You go get – a Donovan Saunders, you go get a Will Lee, you go get a high upside play in Des Ricks, you go get um, Jaden Hale, a kid with some SEC experience, you go get these talented corners. I mean, like if you look at this, 
the depth chart on um what's this play, place always called page called our line our lads i always forget what it's called so i mean you've got on here at corner you got bj mays you went and got the transfer you've got Jaden hill you've got will lee you've got des ricks you've got donovan saunders i mean the amount of of talented transfers that you went and got in this cornerback room is incredible I think that B.J. Mays is going to be a really good player. Y'all know I love Donovan Saunders, love the SEC experience of Jaden Hill, love the upside of Des Ricks, and I think Will Lee is going to be a really good player. I mean, you've got all of these guys to fill a few positions. That is the positive side. And it's funny. You know, a lot of times, ladies and gentlemen, I plan to have these conversations and sometimes I talk myself into it a little bit. I talk myself into it a little bit more than I'm expecting to. And yeah, I mean, I've I I can talk myself into this a little bit, this unit being this good. Now, top 10 in college football is a little bit harder for me to buy. Uh, I can buy, okay, they're gonna be a lot better than we thought than, than we than they were last year. They're gonna be a lot better than we could have hoped and dreamed. But top 10 in college football, if that happens, you're gonna talk about. I mean, just an incredible year-to-year improvement from one of the worst. I mean, the secondary was atrocious last year to being a solid unit in the SEC. I mean, this is this is realistic. The flip side of that is, and now I trust Coach Elko's opinion when it comes to defense, when it comes to um, you know looking at players, reading players. More than I do DJ Durkins from a year ago. But, you know, we were excited about some of these transfers last year. And they did not work out. We never saw Tony Grimes. Um, now, why am I blanking on the one dude's name that got um, DeBerry? You know, he uh, Josh DeBerry, he got – there were times where he was not playing great football and he was getting burned on a game-to-game basis. I mean, we've done this before. But we also haven't done it with this many guys. I mean, what my, my, my argument is kind of a silly one, but it's really like I don't think you can swing and miss five times. I, I don't think you can, knowing that you still have Terry Bussey, Tariq Chappelle, and then the guy, the freshman from last year. I just I feel like you can't swing and miss with five guys. You've got t- you seriously t- around ten players to fill a few spots, and I mean I think you're that deep i think you're that solid there so I, and so that'd be the the negative flip side of this is well we did this last year and the players didn't didn't end up being what we thought they would be that's fair that's a fair take if that's your take i'm not going to yell at you over that take it's a fair take my only pushback to that take would be that i, I mean seriously my only pushback would be I think you've got enough guys to where it's not possible to be that wrong that many times. And I believe in Coach Elko's development and his eye for talent, especially defensive talent. If Coach Elko is going to get a guy, I trust he can play the game. And he went and got you know, eight guys in the secondary as a whole, five, uh, you know, about five guys in the cornerback room. I believe in Coach Elko to be able to look at these guys and go, hey, this kid can play for us. This kid can come from um, UAB, from Cal Poly, from wherever, and and help our football team here at Texas A&M. And that's what Coach Elko did. And I think that you got to trust him. You have got to trust his eye for talent. Um, Once again, continue, especially on defense. Because Colin Klein's pulling the trigger on offensive guys. Coach Oko and Bateman are looking at these at these defensive guys and deciding who they think can be on this team. So, you know, and I think the other exciting part about this cornerback room is it's deep. I mean, the same argument we have, we're saying, oh, you got 10 guys. On the flip side of that, if a couple guys go down with injury, you got eight more. I mean, it, it's it's exciting to know that you have a deep room on top. Because last year it was you had those transfers, you had Tariq Chappelle, um, and then you, you had – the guys that were freshmen. And I think that now you have a room where you have veterans, you have the young, young guys, and you have the sophomores. And I think that that mix is going to work really well. So 
I, I talked myself into it a little bit, ladies and gentlemen. I think I can buy it more. So, yeah, on three believes the Aggies are going to have the 10th best cornerback room in all college football and the third best in the SEC behind only Kentucky and Georgia. Let me know in the YouTube comments, are you buying it? Are you not buying it? I want to hear y'all's thoughts down there. We're going to talk a little bit about um, of the quarterbacks the Aggies are going to play this season. Where does Connor Wigman rank? We'll have that conversation coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But first, I got to tell you about our friends over at LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. So where does Connor Wigman rank among the quarterbacks? the Aggies are going to play this season. And this is just the Notre Dame and the eight SEC games. So the reason this is important to me is very simple. There is no position more important on the football field than quarterback. If you have a good quarterback, you have a good football team. If you know, like if you have a bad cornerback room or a bad defensive line, it won't completely kill your team. If you don't have a quarterback, that is when you are in serious, serious trouble. And I think it's very important to know that the Aggies have a solid quarterback. So let's rank these quarterbacks from worst to best. And then I'll make my, and this is my rankings. And then I will give you my opinion why, and I'll continue to explain why I think this is so important. So 10, I have Blake Shapin, the new guy over at Mississippi State. Ah, you know, a couple of years at Baylor, he was, wasn't was great. I mean, I just think – and then the players surrounding him, there's concerns there. I think there are some upside plays higher than um, Shapin. And there's a guy I have ranked at eight who I think you might, some might go, there's no way that guy's worse than Blake Shape. And I, I think that we'll get into that. So nine, I have Taylor Green. Boise State comes over to Arkansas. You know, massive quarterback, can move, can throw the ball. He's got a little bit of inconsistency when it comes to accuracy throwing the ball, but he, he, he can do it all. He's a, a big dude, hard to bring down. I think he's a good quarterback, but I, I don't think that he is an elite quarterback. And I, there's one guy I might have a little bit too high, and I'll get into that. So number eight, I have Peyton Thorne. This is one you might – you could – if you ranked these three guys so – there's four quarterbacks. I'll go ahead and tell you who seven is. That is Lenores Sellers from South Carolina. Those four guys I just listed I think are the bottom tier of the SEC. Or excuse me, bottom tier of who the uh, Aggies play. So – when I look at this, I say to myself, you know, I don't – you could have those four guys in any order, and I wouldn't be upset about it. I like Lenore Sellers. I think he's got the highest upside of all of these quarterbacks. Young guy, proved he can, he can move with the football. We're going to see what he can do this year. We saw him a little bit last year, not a ton, but when you saw him, he was electric, and he left a lot to be excited about for South Carolina – Fans, that's why I have him seven. Peyton Thorne, we're going to talk a little bit about the Auburn game in segment three. I want to have a few conversations. Um, I'll explain why then, but I think he's going to have some okay weapons, 
And that is why I was willing to put him eighth. And I think you could you could have him tenth, and I wouldn't be upset about it. I just think he might he's going to end up having the best weapons of him, Taylor Green or uh, Blake Shape, and I think his weapons would be better. And I think they're all pretty just mid tier, you know, at quarterbacks. So that is ten, nine, eight, and seven. At six, I have Garrett Nussmeyer from LSU. I always thought his name was Grant Nussmeyer. Was I saying Grant? Maybe I was. I don't know. But have him at six. And this is pretty simple. I think he's got more to prove. I think, I mean, you know, you, we talk about this with Connor Wigman a lot. In all honesty, we haven't seen enough of Connor Wigman to be fully convinced of what he is. But we've seen a lot more of Connor Wigman than we have seen thus far. We've seen pretty much one football game from thus far, and he looked great. But I, I'm going to need to see it from him. I, I believe he's a guy like I, I'd throw him in that Connor Wigman boat where he could be a top three, five, you know, five quarterback in the SEC this season. And I really wouldn't be too surprised by that. But he's going to need to prove that, you know, of course. And I don't think that's going to be the easiest thing in the world to prove. I think that he's, you know, it's not easy to, to go out and prove how, you know, that in the sec, I think he can do it. And I think if he does it, yeah, he's a top five quarterback in this conference, but I have him at six. He's probably the player that I think could end up moving the most on this list. Um, then at five, I have Graham Mertz. If you wanted to move Nussmeyer to five and Graham Mertz to six, I wouldn't be upset about that. I just think Mertz has more experience, and he was fine last year. He wasn't elite. He was fine. He was a solid quarterback in this conference. So I have him five. I think that he's going to have a rough season coming up because of the schedule that Florida has to play, something we've discussed time and time again here on this show. I mean, it's just a gauntlet of a schedule. So, I mean, I feel bad for Mertz, and um, I think he's a better quarterback than the season he's going to have just based on the the – what we know you're going to see happen when it comes to their schedule. Number four is where I have Connor Wigman. So I think that the Aggies are only going to play three teams that have a better quarterback than Connor Wigman. And I do think his upside is, is to be number two on this list. Number, uh, you know, Connor Wigman's going to have a great year. We haven't fully seen him. We haven't seen a full season of Connor Wigman. Hopefully this is the year he stays healthy. Hopefully he's back 100%. We talked about this the other day. Coach Elko said, hey, Connor Wigman's getting there. He's getting healthier and healthier by the day. He's going to be ready to rock here hopefully soon. So Connor Wigman, I have fourth. Three, I have Coach Elko's old quarterback at Duke, Riley Leonard. I think Riley Leonard's a great player. Um, you know, former super not highly ranked guy, but the solid. he's developed into a solid quarterback. I think he's going to have a good season. Um, I know he's a little banged up, and there's some injury concerns when it comes to him, but he's a really good football player, and I think he's got a good season ahead for Notre Dame. Number two is where I have Brady Cook from Missouri. I think that how good Brady Cook is, I think it's a fun debate. Is he a bit overrated? Is he more of a game manager, and he just had such great weapons around him that it kind of elevated him? Well, he's going to have um, Luther, is it Burton, Bertrand, Burton, whatever. He, uh, you know, the star, I forget his last name. It's either Burton or Bertrand. But uh, he'll be back, and he's a solid star. I mean, he's going to be an NFL player. You got him back. You um, So you're going to have weapons still. But I think that my argument is, is Brady Cook just more of a game manager than he is an elite quarterback? And I think you could have a debate on that. But still, he's he's a solid quarterback in this conference. He's a veteran. He's played a lot, and he's going to have a good season. And then at number one, I have Quinn Ewers from Texas. He, he's just a really good player. I think he's going to have a solid season. Um, I think he's going to have a great year for Texas. Uh, you know, not hard to, to talk me into that. But um, I, I think the reason this this conversation should excite Texas m fans is because I think you're only going to play a few games this year where you don't have the better quarterback. And that is a very big deal. I mean, knowing that you can have a, a quarterback where 
and, and and the games that you that the quarterback might be better than you, they're all at home. So I think that is something to pay attention to. Let me know, are there any quarterbacks I'm too high on, I'm too low on in the SEC? Anything I should move around, let me know in the YouTube comments. We're going to talk a little bit about this Auburn game, and I'm going to share my thoughts on why I think maybe I'm underselling the difficulty of this game. We'll have that conversation coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. First, I got to tell you about our friends over at Yahoo Finance. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned investor or are looking for that extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data you need in one place. They are the number one finance destination, producing a holistic look at the financial news cycle, including breaking news, original editorial perspectives, and analyst ratings, independent research, customizable charts, and so much more. For, com for comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com, the number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. That's yahoofinance.com. So I want to have a short conversation about this Auburn game because – um, our Locked on Auburn host, Zach Blackerby, who um, I have recorded with before, he's going on the trip with his wife. Excited for him. It's going to be a great time. I think they're going to the Bahamas. And so we uh, pre-recorded a little show. We recorded it yesterday. It'll go up some um, time next week. It'll be one, one of my shows next week, one of his shows next week, where we really deep dive into this football game. But after that conversation, and after seeing some other news outlets really starting to hype up Auburn a little bit, I want to have the conversation, just a little short four-minute conversation. Am I underplaying this game? And I think that is is, is a realistic possibility. I mean, it, it Auburn has a lot of young talent. They have a lot of freshmen, five stars, freshmen, high four stars. They've got Cam Coleman, the kid previously committed to Texas A and M. They've got some other elite receivers, some elite defensive linemen, some elite linebackers. Um, their offensive line has improved. They, they're Hugh Freeze is putting together a really solid team. You got to remember that you're also this is your second to last game of the season, which means that young talent is going to have plenty of time to develop to adjust to the speed of college football. It's not like you're getting them week three, week four. You're getting them very late in the season where these players have are going to be developed. They're going to the, the young talent on that roster. And you got to go play there. I mean, I still do believe that Texas A&M's roster is, is a little bit better than Auburn's. And I believe that quarterback play, is much better for Texas A&M. We're going to get to listen. Uh, when you watch that episode, you'll get to listen to um, to Zach kind of explain, make his argument for why he thinks Peyton Thorne is going to be serviceable. Um, and he makes some solid points, but I still do believe where it matters the most, quarterback, Texas a and is going to have a significant advantage, and that is the reason I do believe Conor Higgins is going to be able to go down to the Plains and win this football game. I believe Texas A&M wins. I still do believe, but I also believe that I think we need to be putting more stock into this football game. I think it could be a better I think it could be a better game than I was giving it credit to be. It's kind of the argument I wanted to make. So, you know, I don't want to get super deep into this conversation because it's going to be a whole episode next week. I just wanted to say it's something I'm monitoring, and it, it's going to be a fun show next week. It was a great conversation with Zach, and I think y'all will enjoy it. But I think – because here's the deal. I've, I've said it on the show a ton. This Auburn game and the Florida game, I believe that those are the two most significant games when it comes to winning um, – when it comes to winning nine games. If you want to win nine football games, you have got to win – those two games and it's not going to be the easiest thing in the world to do. So that is my thoughts on this Auburn game. I think it's going to be more challenging than I've given it credit for. And you'll get to hear Zach and I break this down more on a show next week. We haven't decided what day we're going to put that up. 
Um, but it'll be one of our one of my shows next week. So we'll get more, we'll get deeper into this Auburn game, which I think could be the most significant game on Texas AM's schedule. That is going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Aggies. Really appreciate y'all being here every single day. Hope everybody has an outstanding rest of their day today. And we will see you tomorrow.